Howdy folks. So uh, for you today I have this, which is a uh, lithium ion, lithium polymer battery charger. This is the XTAR model VC2. Uh, this is a dual cell, uh, single cell charger. And uh, I picked this up off of Amazon and what really kind of struck me was its, its, uh, its price. It was very cheap. Um, in, you know, in Canadian uh, Canadian pesos, which are worth pretty much nothing right now, um, I think I only spent like 25 bucks on this. So, really good deal. Uh, it's got a full L full LCD, which I'll I'll show you and everything. So I'm just going to do a quick review and uh, just take it apart, and uh, I'll give you my thoughts on it. So, as you can see, it's uh, two cells, um, and just got these springy, very very strong. Um, springs for each channel, um, which are both independent, by the way. And they've, uh, you can actually kind of see, they've actually greased the, uh, the sliders, so they've taken the care at least to do that. Um, so these will charge anything that fits in here, whether it be the small cells, um, the large cells. They list on the back uh, some of the sizes that it can take, um, but of course, you know, 18650 is probably what most people are going to be charging, but you can charge pretty much any cell that fits in this and with a custom modification that I'll show you, <laughs> custom modification, you can charge pretty much any cell with this, um, which, which is quite nice. So basically we've got a, an, an LCD, which I'll show you uh, that lit up in just a moment. Uh, the input is just a, a USB micro B connector at one amp. Uh, it comes with a cable, uh, but it does not come with an actual power adapter. And that's one of the reasons probably why they can offer this for so cheap. And I'm, I'm totally okay with that because at the end of the day, I have so many things that you can plug this into that I don't really need to buy another one. So I'd rather they cut the cost and just ditch that. And of course, um, this will actually uh, work on anything less than one amp. So it will just scale the charge current down accordingly. So um, it won't brown out whatever you plug this into. So you could plug this into a PC and it would just charge at a quarter of an amp per cell. So this one amp input translates to half an amp per cell maximum. So if you only have one cell in here, it still will only charge at half an amp. And when we take it apart, you'll probably realize why. It's got some uh, some vents around here. It does not get very hot while charging. I had this thing going for about three days straight, cycling batteries in it, and uh, it doesn't get, it just gets kind of slightly warm, uh, even when on carpet, which blocks most of the, the, the holes. It's really, heat is not a big deal with this, but I mean, it, it's not a high powered device. It's only five watts. And, uh, you know, it claims to have all sorts of stuff. Uh, they've got a, an interesting scratch off portion here for your warranty. So I'm not sure if there are fakes. Uh, I, I don't entirely know what that's getting on about. But anyway, that's pretty much it. You get, with it, you get some little manual thing, which is not terribly useful. Um, I mean, it, it really, you, you'd figure out all this stuff without the manual anyway. Pretty much all it tells you is, you know, it says full when it's done. It flashes the backlight when it's done. That's pretty much all the manual tells you. Warranty card, which is useless. And it comes with a bag, which is actually not a bad bag. It feels kind of nice and it's got the drawstring and everything. So I don't know if you'd need that, but it comes with it. So let me just plug this in so you can see what the LCD looks like. It's kind of coming apart because I've taken the screws out because I wanted to make this video a little bit shorter. I didn't want to have to deal with taking screws out. So I'll just plug this into my PC here and you can see the, uh, the backlight is blue and uh, the way that they've done this LCD is they've got three gauges with um, milliamp hours on the bottom here. So the gauge on the top is current. Now this is really odd. Um, what I think, the manual doesn't really do a good job of explaining what that gauge means. Uh, currently, as you can see, it says it, you know, 0 0.5 amps. Of course, there's nothing plugged into it. So what I think this gauge means is the max charge current of a single cell given the input you have. So if I plug this into, let's say, a 500 milliamp source and put one cell in, my expectation is it would move to the middle marker, the 0.25 amps. That's my guess. I haven't tested that yet. I might actually test that in just a moment but that is what I would assume it does. Um, we just have voltage here, basically it goes from zero volts to three volts, and it's point, uh, point 0.1 volt increments all the way up to 4.1, and then they go to 0.05 volt increments just for the very end of charge. 
And the milliamp hours counts up from zero, of course, um, and then it just flashes full and it cycles between full and the total uh, energy put into the cell when it's done. The backlight flashes, like I said, when the charge is done for each cell. And uh, like I said, they're fully independent, so you can take one out um, and put another one in while the other one's charging and you don't interrupt anything. One of the only complaints, I'm actually very happy with this, one of the only complaints that I have with this <laughs> is that it, this these levers can be kind of dangerous. Um, if you put a cell in here and you try to remove the cell by you know pulling it out this way and your finger is down here, when this thing snaps back, it hurts a lot on your thumb. So uh, I guess I guess word of you know word of warning always remove the cell from this top portion here so you don't get bit by this because that that really hurt I've I've done it twice one to each hand so yeah that's kind of annoying now I've actually charged every single lipo cell that I own with this thing so I don't have any discharge cells but this one I charged first a couple of days ago so maybe it'll try and try and charge it it does the constant current then constant voltage type thing. So you can see that the uh, the voltage immediately shot up to 4.2 volts. The milliamp hour started flashing at zero. It may put a small amount of charge in it, maybe a couple milliamp hours. Yeah, it's starting to count up. But I expect this, um, it's, it's gonna be in constant voltage mode, so I expect this thing to be finished very, very quickly. I wonder what would happen if I move this to something that can only supply half an amp. So let's try that. So I'm gonna move this to a port on my PC. So this can only supply half an amp as far as I know. I wanna see what the top does. Actually, no, I need two cells for that, shit. Yes, if my hunch is correct, I would need two cells to get that meter on the top to change. I've never seen it show anything other than 0.5 amps, so I, I don't really know. The thing is, these are in constant voltage mode, so they're not really drawing any current, so I don't actually have a way of testing what that top gauge does, unfortunately. But if anyone has this and they they know, um, that would be kind of useful because I've got it. Got to be kind of careful when moving these. I, I I haven't been able to figure out what that that gauge does, but everything else seems to work just fine, so I'm happy with that. Doesn't offer cell discharge, which is something that would be kind of nice, but um, I mean for the cost. For the cost, the fact that it has an LCD that can count milliamp hours is good enough for me. So anyway, taking the back off, there's just some pads with uh, six screws on the back, which we can remove. I just don't want the uh, springs to go flying. And this is inside here. So uh, again, you can kind of see the grease on there, so I really don't want to touch those if I don't have to. Um, the back has just got some guides to uh, prevent these uh, springy bars from going everywhere. We have uh, two wheel date wheels here. Uh, we have 1510, so I'm assuming that that would be, uh, uh, what is that, October of uh, 2015, when it was manufactured, which makes sense, given you know the fact this is January 2016, that would, uh, that would make sense. So it's a two board construction. Uh, with a small uh, ribbon in between the two. Now there's a chip in the middle of the top board and then there's actually, I'm not sure if you can see this, but there is a chip on the bottom board as well. Both of these chips have absolutely no markings. Um, I don't believe that they have been scrubbed off. There's no indication that they've done that. I think these chips were both manufactured without a marking. Um, the one on the the, the bottom is most certainly an LCD driver, of course, because it's mounted directly to the LCD board. It's connected directly uh, to the pins of the LCD, of course. Um, but I'm not sure how much intelligence it has because this uh, ribbon cable here is actually, uh, it's five pins and it's labeled. Um, the labels are on the inside, so they're very difficult to read, but they are uh, five volts, ground, data, clock, and enable. So I'm not quite sure what kind of protocol this uses. I couldn't be bothered to get out my um, protocol analyzer to try and figure out what's going on here, but it, it's probably like a half microcontroller, half LCD driver chip. Um, I really don't know and I really don't care. This is probably doing most of the, uh, this is probably where most of the brains are in this device. Um, the USB input comes directly in on this side. And you can see we've got the positive and negative terminals for each. And of course, they are separated. They are independent. 
And I believe um, that we've got, uh, you know, we've got our protection diodes here. And I believe these two SOT23 devices here and here, I believe that those are the actual current control for the cells. So that would explain the limitation to half an amp per cell because they're, they're using a SOT23 FET. They're actually labeled U1 and U2. And they do have Q1 and Q2 here, but I don't believe that those are being used to, um, the, way, the, way I, the way I see this trace is going, I don't think they're actually involved directly in switching these on and off. So yeah, if they beefed those up, then we would have easily been able to uh, move a little bit more current, but again, not that, not that big a deal. So, I mean, both of the boards are branded XTAR. Um, you know, Rev A1, Rev A2. Um, there's a 2015-11-11 date code on this one, a 2015-11-10 date code on this one. So that's actually after the plastic molding was made. Um, so that's interesting. So this may be a fairly new product or a new design of the product. I don't know. Never heard of this company before. Um, I mean, they're just a, a Shenzhen electric. I think it said that on the manual somewhere. So... Uh, yeah, I'm totally okay with the uh, the solder quality and uh, everything. I mean, it's very simple. There's not very much in here. It's a single-sided board. You can see it's not even got solder mask on the other side. So I'm happy with the construction. I'm happy with the way it works, and the price is really good. So I, I really don't have any downsides to this. Now, I did mention that I would show you my ghetto way of connecting up batteries. So, for example, if you've got something that looks like this, uh, this is part of an old laptop pack, and of course they're welded together. These are just 18650s, uh, 18650s, but they're welded together, and I didn't really want to take these apart. So um, I left the tabs on, because of course, you know, I can't weld these back on. I'd have to solder tabs, and that's kind of annoying. So I just left these, unless I need a cell, but I have a bunch of loose cells anyway. So I wanted to charge these to, you know, keep them, uh, you know, healthy while they're in storage, but not remove them from this. Of course, these don't fit in here. So the easiest way to do this without avoiding your warranty is actually to uh, use some, uh, use like an old uh, chapstick lip balm thing. And uh, that fits quite nicely in here, if I inserted it the right way. And then take some paper clips. This is where MacGyver comes in. And you just insert the paper clips in between the, uh, the lever. Everything's more difficult when the screws are not in the back but uh, it won't be that difficult for you. But uh, yeah, you just insert those and then you can, uh, now you have little posts and you can take alligator clip leads and just clip that on there and clip it on there. And this thing was totally okay with charging these three cells in parallel like this, no issues, it charged it. Um, these cells were about half charged, so it only put about 3000 milliamp hours into this pack. I assume that if you have a large enough pack, there's gonna be a sort of like a milliamp a milliamp hour counter that sort of times out uh, after you put so much energy in. So I don't think you could charge really large cells with it, but you know, m things like this, uh, any kind of like loose cell, like those flat cells you rip out of stuff, they would, uh, they would work in that kind of configuration so you could charge them. Um, it's just kind of nice that you can do that. So yeah. That's uh, that's really, I think, all I have to say about it. I, I think it's actually a great product for the, the price I paid for it. And you can probably get it cheaper in the U.S. and stuff, so um, even more power to it, I guess, at that point. So anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.